Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time I'm gonna play a little bit with some down converters from Scientific Atlanta. They are both a model 4612. See the big one here is 4612-4. So I think this is a four gigahertz um, input here, right? And the other one is 6L. So I think that will be six gigahertz, right? So if we compare them like that, I think this is uh, how it works. So this is of course a, a wave guide and uh, in there, let's see if we can get a little bit of light. You can see the antenna right there. I got them at the latest uh, radio amateur flea market. And um, I just wanted to see what is inside actually. I just got them for free for fun. And uh, I don't have any uh, thing I can test them with because the problem is um, at first I had the idea maybe there is an oscillator in t uh, inside and then you just remote control or steer this uh, oscillator and then um, I could have played a lot with this but that is not the case. You need to have a local oscillator input and then you will get your IF output. I got a little photocopy here. See here, it says a little bit about what it is doing and uh, something like that. See, what I was looking for is here, it's RF signals in the gigahertz to an intermediate frequency, about 70 megahertz, right? So that means you need to input a local oscillator also in the gigahertz, right? Only 70 uh, megahertz away from the input RF. And uh, that is where it stops a little bit for for me, really. It, uh, so there's a little explainer here. So this is the signal input waveguide. And here is our local oscillator input. And there you have uh, your 70 megahertz. So here's a 70 megahertz uh, amplifier and a 70 megahertz power divider. Maybe I can use some of those parts. I really want to see how this is uh, built. And then there's of course a um, power detector. The fun thing is the power detector is on the local oscillator input. Why that? Hmm. Not a lot of interesting stuff here. They uh, also explain a little bit more a, a typical test setup. So if you have your system here, so this is your, uh, whatever it is you're testing, and then you have an IF frequency that goes to this one, and then it goes all the way up. So here it must be some multipliers or something like that, right? And then of course you need to have a sweep oscillator that drives the local oscillator input here. And then you can measure the output power, I guess, right? So this is just done using this. Hmm. No, not at all interesting. Yeah, they say, yeah, uh, that is funny. So our IF amp and all this runs at negative 20 volts. So this is uh, good to know. And we even have probably the pinouts. So this is B1 in the connector. And I got the I got the cables and they got the uh, those uh, funny numbers and they should of course fit this connector here. So I think what we're going to do is just open and have a look and see what we can uh, what we can find of a fun thing inside. So let's play with the 6 gigahertz uh, version first. And um the first thing I find that is, uh, of course, uh, correct. 
And this is also explained in the little manual sheet we got. See, here's a capacitor. Positive is the chassis and <laughs> negative is connected to a red wire. I mean, so red wire is negative. I mean, that is so bad. <laughs> I kind of like this one here. So this is the local oscillator output, the 70 megahertz. Goes in a really uh, sexy quality end connector, a semi rigid cable and an SMA connector. There's another no name SMA connector here. We don't know where that is going. That will be the IF output, the 70 megahertz output. And it goes via those thick cables to a little uh, combiner. I guess this is a resistive combiner because it says minus 3.5 dB. So we've just got some uh, resistors in here for 70 megahertz. But the thing that I find really weird, look at the thick black cables here. It says RG59. So that means it's 75 ohms. Why are they using 75 ohms here on the internal when this is 50 ohms uh, connectors? Hmm. Normally it will be 50 ohms. So that is a little bit weird. Maybe they're just uh, thinking, hmm, it's just super short and it's uh, low frequency. Or it's probably because of those connectors here they are really special and this combiner here is a classic tv installation combiner so it's using those annoying tv connectors and uh, th that this is designed for 75 ohms and the cables and the connectors and all that is just uh, ready available so this looks a little bit um amateur level if you ask me and this is not wh what i would normally expect for a <laughs> for scientific atlanta i mean sorry guys but those are normally super duper top pro dudes so why are we seeing uh, toy stuff in here that is a little bit weird but we want to go in here and have a deeper look inside this fantastic box right Still don't find any year codes or anything like that. And here is the minus 20 volts input, local oscillator level. So that will be a test signal. Okie dokie, fantastic. So there's something going on here. Built quite uh, beautiful to be honest. And in here we got this RF attenuation foam. And here we go. This is the oscillator input. Test signal input. So test signal input, there is a, um, a little load. And then we can just cobble to this system here, just like the real antenna that is inside this waveguide. So it doesn't matter if you put in here or you put in there. So your oscillator also goes into this system. And you got those two diodes here. And that is what's crea uh, creating the mixing. And that will be the low frequency output that goes this way to the amplifier and you can see this is a low pass filter because of the thin track and then you have a capacitor so your inductor capacitor inductor capacitor so this is a low pass filter and the length of all, all these things matches 70 megahertz so that is why we have these really crazy dimensions where all the dimensions you see here that's designed for uh, six gigahertz So this, this diode here is a uh, level detector of the local oscillator, how much you have input. And 
And there's another really, really cool thing about this, uh, this part here. So the idea is you rotate this little part here, and then there is a ceramic substrate with a little coupler like that. So when you rotate this one, you can imagine you're coupling. So there's a minimum, and this is a yeah a little variable attenuator. <laughs> Amazing. So I took out the entire board and under the amplifier look at that i find a little label here it says 5925 to 6875 so now we know the frequency range of this unit i also measured the resistors so they are 50 ohms and i measure the two diodes to 0.3 volts also I don't know if you can see this, but it's really nice and shiny. And when you touch a board like this with your fingers, it's super, super nice and slippery. slippery. Uh, I mean, super low friction. You can even see it polishes nice and fine. And this is because it's a Teflon uh, board. And Teflon boards, especially in the old age, they were like impossible to make uh, VS in it. So what you see here is a little brass piece that is stamped through and again here and uh, where's the last one i can't see that one anyway and here you go so this is uh this is the ground connection and also i find 1976 so now we also know the age how cool is that so here is the little 70 megahertz amplifier done using normal transistors and i think we find a yes i think this is 76 written on that transistor right there so we got three little transistors and probably a voltage regulator and up here is the output it's quite a beautiful design oh yeah uh, by the way the power splitter is of course a little split out like this um i think they call this a wilkinson but it's uh, i'm not quite sure because it's made using ferrites but you can actually do it like that as well and there you have your um, resistor for the balance ferrites to find to i don't know exactly why they put ferrites here Probably to uh, get some harmonics after all. But this is a uh, yeah, super low tech for television installations. <laughs> so can't be super impressed about that. Let's look inside the 4 gigahertz version. Everything here is of course a lot bigger. But other than that, I think it is more or less the same concept. This is probably a test input signal, uh, just like the other one, but here it's an end connector. And uh, output is SMA, yeah, that is the same. And the same little absolutely uh, embarrassment of a power divider. In uh, the input here, there is this, look at that. How is it? Yeah, here we go. If I push here, I can move this. This is actually an attenuator, so it's not changing the resonance, but it's changing yeah, the attenuation. So this is for a alignment of the input, I guess. And you can put this little screw here or this here and then make it uh, nice and fine, right? So I got the unit out. It looks a lot like the other one. Well, here we got the frequency ranges 3.7 to 4.2. And it was a test signal, exactly. So there's something about frequency response. Interesting. So that's probably what's behind this uh, screw here. Yeah, so we just... Uh, 
open and have a little look. And it looks exactly the same, but it, everything here is, of course, just a little bit bigger because it's a lower frequency. So that will be the low pass filters and all these things here. They will be uh, bigger. Test copper. And this is the local oscillator power monitor. And the reason why you want a power monitor here, that is, of course, you need proper input drive to activate the diodes um, correctly. And it's exactly the same amplifier board. And here is, uh, of course, also this manual attenuator. And here there is a nice little marking for minimum and maximum. And here's a little dot and says minimum. So what I think we should do is try and uh, unscrew this one and see where is it. See? So minimum is this way. And maximum is that way. That's actually the opposite of what I thought. <laughs> I thought if you put it like this, ah, it's attenuation. Now it makes sense. It, it is called an attenuator. So maximum attenuation is the lowest possible signal. Now it makes sense. Now it is correct. And you, you can see the point is this big part here is now touching as much as this track. So that creates a big capacitance, a big coupling to ground. But if I go the other way around here, then the signal just goes through. So here's a nice yeah, track that just yeah goes around. It's exactly the same as it's not there. So that is of course how it works. Now it makes sense. Here it is again, a super nice Teflon board. It's a little bit more beautiful, this one, because everything is just bigger, so you can easier see what you're doing. I mean, if we do it like this, you can see it's exactly the same circuit. So I think that is all I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching and please come back again soon.